All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, we've got season 40, War One against Eslaw. Uh, their bands were Kitty, Tigra, and Gallon. Obviously, Ghost and Quake are perma band this season. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at their map here. My team is going to be Omega Red, Sabretooth. And I am bringing in Torch. Um, I'm bringing him in for one fight. And, but the primary reason that I brought him in instead of someone else is because I need to place a pre-fight, like my flame on, on a fight for somebody else who has a rank 4 torch. So I'm going to go ahead and scoot over to my path. I'm going to be on path 7 in section 1 and section 2. I'm taking a bunch of shared fights along the way. And... Um, also the final boss. So I have nine fights this war. It's going to be a little bit long. And Omega does benefit from the attacker tactic this season. Um, but so many champions benefit. F like so many good champions benefit from that tactic. That um, the attacker tactic is just amazing this season. So looking around here for anything particularly interesting. So like. They did a good job of setting up their map to go along with their bands, like putting a Hulkling on, on Buffet over time. Like, that's a fight that I would normally send a Tigra to, but they banned her. Um, let's see here. I know that there were some other, some other placements like that where it's like I would normally send, you know, so-and-so here, but I can't because they're banned. So, this is kind of another example of that. Um, I would send a kitty here. Jabari, pretty much no matter what you do against her on this node, uh, she's going to reflect damage back onto you. So I could be using, like, my mediums only. I'm going to switch to that in a second. Um, but yeah, and you're going to see, too, something has changed with the AI recovery time. I always do slow combos, and just that medium-medium combo, um, she was able to, like wiggle out of it and throw her special one. Not a huge deal. I mean, it wouldn't have really done anything if she had hit me with it, but it's just something that I kind of kept in mind for the rest of this war. And this war is going to be just riddled with mistakes. It's not going to be a very clean war. Um, I am going to make a lot of a lot of mistakes here. So, okay. Um, this Atuma, this is a rank 4 Atuma. He is not a difficult defender. Like, I think thought that there are some places you can put him where I think he would be difficult but path seven um you know now that I've fought him here a couple times just isn't isn't the place for him um okay then I'm also gonna fight this storm x I'm gonna get horrible rng on this fight um I always like tap the defender here a little bit during the incinerate phase um just to stay close and not get cornered but I think Almost every time that I tap her, I'm going to get incinerated. So, not great. Obviously, she's going to glance me trying to lock in my spores here, which is kind of annoying. I should have tried it again there, but um, instead I missed a parry. Took some hits. Luckily, she didn't have that huge fury on her. And this does have power efficiency, too. So, I'm going to have to bait out two special ones. Um... But you can see the fight is almost over. I mean, it's a section one fight. There's not really a, a whole lot of danger to it. I'm going to throw my special two. That will fate seal her. She can't glance special attacks. Um, and the fight's over. Again, I don't think that that's necessarily the place for Storm Pyramid X. If, if you're going to place her, I don't think she's like a top 50 defender. And then this is going to be an eye bomb. This is good placement. He, um... You know, you already need, like, two immunities here, and him being here causes you to need a third. Um, but I- so somebody placed Odin, like, Odin pre-fights, Odin buffs on here for me. Um, in part for my section two. Um, but I'm just gonna lose a lot of health here. I'm gonna make some- I'm gonna make some mistakes, gonna lose a lot of health. Uh, I think I get hit at some point. You can see, uh, okay, yeah, it's right there. Take a combo. Also, I noticed in this war that the block damage that I was taking was 
was kind of insane. I run a point in an equity. So, you know, I should be reducing, especially against like I Bomb Kingpin, I should be reducing the damage I'm taking from them by a lot. And I really, I really wasn't. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. I checked my masteries after this first, like after these first four fights, just to make sure I had points in block proficiency, and I do, so. Okay, um, for this fight, I am using Torch, so I changed my masteries, and in the time that I was changing my masteries, um, I forgot to boost. So <laughs> I went into this fight completely unboosted. Um, which I didn't remember right away. I think I remembered it during this fight and I got a little bit nervous. But, I mean, it's a torch against a Nimrod. I'm pretty sure I could just stand here, um, and let him hit me and he would die. And this person is also, uh, running suicide. So they're gonna take a lot of damage from recoil. I think there were, like, two people who placed defense in my battle group who placed with you know, suicide masteries. So... Um, yeah, just gonna bait out specials. I am gonna get hit in this fight as well. It's like a common theme for this war. <laughs> I think I get hit in, like, most of the rest of my fights, too. Um, okay, so here I'm just going to throw a special two, push him to a special two. I don't really care. Um, I'm fine with that. Bait out the special two. He's gonna be unstoppable, but this person is also not running max limber, so I can I could probably afford to get in two hits. And yeah, the fight's over. So, you know, very easy fight. Again, the reason I brought torch wasn't because, you know, I felt like I needed a torch for that fight. Um, you know, I think I could have taken that fight with Omega Red, honestly. Um, but I I did that because um, I needed a flame on for somebody else. So, alright, next up is going to be this kingpin. This person is also running Suicide Masteries. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to knock him down. This fight is, you know, I mean, I, I should have just sped it up, but it's so fast that it doesn't even really matter. So, it's been... Less than 30 seconds. About 30 seconds. He's almost dead. Gonna go ahead and lock in spores. And that's it. So it's like a 35 second fight. Alright, and now I'm going to scoot up here. I'm gonna take this Nova. Um, so this is part of why I had all three Odin buffs instead of just the shock resistance one for that eye bomb. Um, this Nova has Rich Get Richer, and, you know, I've fought Nova a ton, i fought him with a lot of champions, and I know that you can't just dash back once and punish his heavy attack, you know, I, I'm sure you could interrupt it, maybe, but, um, I felt like the second time here I tried to interrupt it, I think it might be a little too fast, or I'm too slow. So I'm going to throw my special two. I'm going to fate seal him. I'm beating him on rich get richer, but um, I am going to push him to a special three. Um, that was my plan coming in here was to just push him to special three, um, which is why I use the invuln. But um, I only have one invuln left. And as you can see, it really doesn't matter because he's at like 10%. So I'm just going to take the special three. And I could throw my special three here, but I could also just tap him once and save some time. So, okay, moving up here, gonna place the pre-fight, and then I'm going to move on to this Nick Fury on node 49. Um, you know, he is kind of annoying here, and I don't really know why. I... So first of all, the, the block damage I was taking in this fight, um, again, like, I mean, I know Omega Red really well. I play him all the time, especially in war. Um, I know what, like, normal block damage is for him, and this isn't it. So, 
I'm going to, I had to waste all of my spores throwing my special one because I got cornered. Um, which is fine. I'm gonna lock in like, you know, what, 10 spores here in a second. I mean, yeah, this this fight, it, it did get a little bit dicey. So he's just really not wanting to throw a special two. Here, I tap him once during the incinerate phase, and I get an incinerate, of course. But it's not the end of the world. Here, I'm going to get hit by a heavy attack, which actually ends up helping me um, to get those bleeds. So here, I'm going to throw my special two so I can get rid of his that massive fury buff that he gets um, in his second life. And that's super helpful because of the block damage I'm taking and how low my health is. I'm below 50% at this point. Just trying to stay close to him, lock in, you know, a couple spores. And yeah, I mean, the fight's over. So this whole war was just such a, you know, a potion suck. And I was also kind of like racing the clock here because we had a little bit of a time issue um, between the time that I took my section two fights and the time I got here. Um, so I had like, I think like seven minutes left or something on my 30% boost. So... Here, uh, this is a Korg boss. I think I heard a lot of people talking about like Korg bosses in the off season. Like, oh, Korg is gonna be such a tricky defender, such a tricky boss. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I think that even without Omega Red, I think a lot of champions could easily take Korg on the boss node. Um, Kitty Pride could do it. Um, Diablo could do it. I'm sure. Um, you know, lots of lots of champions can take a Korg boss. I don't think that he is like among the most dangerous. I think in another battle group, like someone, um, I'm trying to think. I think it was DJ. Um, I mean, such a good player. Hasn't used Omega Red in War since like he was doing Act Six, and he took the Korg boss with a rank three six star Omega Red. So it's not like a it's not a big feat to, to for me to be able to do it since I use him all the time. But um, yeah, I definitely think that there are more dangerous de defenders that could go on the boss node at this point. And honestly, the boss node is a lot less dangerous than it was last season with like the unblockable and stuff. Um, if you use a tactic attacker for the boss node, um, you know... There's, there's not even the same amount of risk that there was last season, like dexing six times to get rid of the debuffs, like, you know, I mean, even that. It, it, it's easier than that this time around, so, um, yeah, I think that this global is quite a bit easier than the last one was. Okay, locking in like a couple spores here and there, going to just throw my special two. So that's basically the strategy. Just throw your special two, keep him pinned in the corner, um, bait special two, punish his special two with your heavy attack, and the fight will be over. So about a two minute fight, not bad. He had like 600,000 health. Um, but yeah, so that's it. We did end up winning this war. Um, yeah, we did end up winning this war. It wasn't like a, you know, a complete like blowout or anything like that, but, um, yeah, so good war to these guys and I will see you in the next one.